I'm Michaela Chapman. I'm Shana Chapman. And you are watching Michaela and Shana Online. Today we have a special guest for you. Yay! <laughs> Actor and Executive Vice President for SAG-AFTRA, Mr. Ned Vaughn. Hi. Hi, Shana, and hi, hi, Michaela. It's really nice to talk to you today. Nice really to nice to you talk too. to you, too. <laughs> so what do you got for me? We well, we know that you are a dad. Yes, I am. And a dad. you have five kids. I certainly do. I what are their names? Well, I have uh, Hannah, Miller, <laughs> Keenan and James, and Charlotte. And uh, Hannah, she's right uh, right between you guys. You're 13 and you're 11. Yep. She's 12. Ooh. And then Miller's 10. Uh, Keenan and James, they're twins. They're seven. Aww. They're going to be eight <laughs> soon. And our little daughter, Charlotte, she's going to be five in just about a month. Oh, wow, cute! cute. <laughs> So I hear you di you have done acting since you were eight? Yeah, that's right. I started uh, doing community theater when I was a little boy in Huntsville, Alabama. And uh, I continue to act uh, in high school. And then when I went to college, uh, I thought I wanted to keep acting as a hobby. So what I did is I took an acting class, and there were some pretty serious folks in there. And I thought, well, you know, maybe I ought to go try doing this for a living. And uh, after I left college, I went to New York to try to become an actor. And luckily, I uh, started getting some work and been doing it ever since. What a journey. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it's been very, very rewarding. And I've had a lot of fun. I've gotten to do all sorts of incredible things that I would never would have gotten to do any other way. I got to ride in a submarine. Whoa. I've gotten to climb mountains. Cool. Uh, I've been pretending I'm a cowboy riding horses all over the <laughs> desert. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, very good stuff. So you've done c theater, so what kind of theater work have you done? Well, I did uh, a variety of uh, little off-Broadway projects when I lived in New York, but that was a very long time ago. The last uh, play that I did was actually a pretty long time ago as well. That was uh, ooh, 1998, so it's been over 10 years since I've done a play, but I, that was in uh, Dublin, Ireland at the uh, Dublin Theatre Festival, which was uh, great fun. So you travel a lot? I do travel a lot. I mean, I was uh, in, in the early part of my career, I was very lucky, and I, I shot uh, movies and television shows in various locations all over the world. And that was uh, just so much fun. But, of course, now, because I'm a father of five kids, <laughs> you, you, know, you know what it's like when your mom or dad has to go away for a long time. It's not fun for you guys, and it's not fun for the mom or dad. So, luckily, uh, I haven't gone out of town as much later, but now for all the uh, union stuff for SAG-AFTRA, I'm having to do uh, some more traveling. And you've been in Oliver Twist? How? I, I, I was in Oliver Twist, and in fact, my son Miller is just uh, finishing uh, a run of his first show, which was Oliver Twist. Oh, who wow. did you play in Oliver Twist? Uh, I just played one of the orphans in the chorus, and it's the same for my son Miller. Oh, cool. <laughs> How does membership in SAG-AFTRA benefit young actors? Well, membership in SAG-AFTRA benefits actors of every age, but it's especially important for young actors because, look, professional uh, entertainment is a serious business, as you know. If you've ever been on a professional set, They've got, uh, they've got deadlines to meet, and the productions have to get done on time, and the schedule can be very demanding. The, the rigors of the working conditions can sometimes be very demanding. And that's where having a union to protect you, to make sure that you're getting your other needs met, like uh, for a young performer, your needs uh, for education, for not being worked for too many hours without a break, uh, all those sorts of uh, considerations are very uh, carefully considered by the union, and we have good protections in place for our contracts. And it, it doesn't just go for kids. Obviously, as an adult, you don't want to have to work for hours and hours and hours on end without a break, so we make sure that people get appropriate breaks. They get time to go home between days and have uh, enough rest so that they can come back the next day and give a good performance. And, of course, we concentrate for all our members on making sure that they get paid enough, uh, that they get residuals for their work where that applies, and that they, uh, they have access to good uh, health insurance and pension benefits. That's not something you're going to be worried about for a very long time. But I'll tell you something. You know, 
80 years from now when you retire, uh, uh, because you're going to work for so long, you're going to be very successful, I can tell, you're going uh, to be very happy that you have a, a good pension to rely on. And part of that comes from the fact that you're members of this union. And when you work, you get contributions to that retirement. And that's, uh, that's a very big deal. And you said residuals. What is a residual, and when um, c does an actor get one and not get one? Well, uh, to say when they get one and not get one would take a, a fair amount of time because there are certain types of projects that uh, don't have a residual structure or that a re where a residual structure only kicks in if certain conditions are met. But the basic premise here is this. When a producer makes a, a scripted entertainment project and you're in it as an actor, obviously you get paid for going and doing the work, right? And what the producer has also paid for is the right to have an initial exhibition of that work. So if, if a producer hires me to be in a movie, they pay me for the time that I spend acting in the movie, and then that includes them being able to show that movie in the, in the theaters all over the country. That's how they make their money back, right? But as you know, if you're in a very popular movie, like I was, I was in a really good movie called The Hunt for Red October. I did that movie Ooh. in 1989, I think. And it's still a classic. People still watch that movie and watch it a lot. They rent it uh, on DVD. They download it from Netflix. They do all sorts of things, right? And so the producer of that movie, they're still making money. Now, you know, it's 20 years later. And it's important for actors to make sure that we get a share of those revenues that because when they're making money, they're, they're making money because of the work that the actors and the director and the writers all put into making that movie. And the residuals are our way of getting payment uh, based on the amount of money that the producer is making as, as, uh, as they exhibit the project down the line. When is the right time in a child actor's career to join the union? Wow, that's a great question. That's a, that's a question that a lot of adults have, too. And, uh, you know, I would say, first of all, that union membership for a professional performer is always a good idea because you get protections that you just can't get any other way. But, you know, it's not, it's not cheap to join uh, the union. Uh, the cost of joining sag after now is $3,000. That's the full initiation fee. It varies some in other uh, smaller markets throughout the country, but in Los Angeles and New York, which are the primary areas where we uh, do the entertainment industry, uh, for example. Now, we cover broadcast and recording artists as well in SAG-AFTRA, and that's a little more distributed throughout the country. But uh, the cost of joining the union is $3,000, and then there are dues uh, every year. And so you don't want to join the union until you're starting to engage in professional work because it is expensive but once you are engaging in professional work once you're working on projects that are covered by our contracts it absolutely benefits uh, any performer to join the union do you have to have experience or can you just join it without like the proper experience well, that, you know, it's interesting. They, one of the changes that happened when uh, SAG and AFTRA merged to become SAG-AFTRA is there were different membership entrance requirements for the two unions. In Screen Actors Guild, you had to work under the contracts to join. And in AFTRA, uh, it was what's known as an open union. So you could, if you, if you wanted to pursue the work, you could go ahead and join the union before you were working under the contracts. Now in SAG-AFTRA, it's closer to the way that uh, Screen Actors Guild used to do it. You need to be working under our contracts. If you're a background performer, uh, there's something called the three voucher system, which will allow you to uh, work, even though you're not a union member, you can work on the union set, uh, and you get covered by something called a background voucher. And, and that's how you need to enter the union now. So you do need to be working uh, in a professional circumstance that's covered by our contracts. Okay. What requirements does a child actor have to have to join uh, SAG-AFTRA? Well, uh, really just that they're working under our contracts. I mean, it, there's no requirement other than that. If you're, whether you're a little baby, 
frankly, or, or a, a near teenager. Well, an actual teenager like you. Yeah. Brand new teenager. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, we love teenagers. Yeah. Um, but if, uh, no matter what your age, if you are uh, getting into work that's covered by SAG, uh, SAG contracts or after contracts previously, or SAG after contracts as we go forward, uh, you are eligible to join the union. Hmm. And what does the Global Rule 1 mean? Well, Global Rule 1 is something that was, uh, that, that's the old Screen Actors Guild name for uh, the, the Rule 1, which means that you have to work under union contracts. And uh, AFTRA had a similar rule called No Contract, No Work. And basically what those rules do is they establish that members of the union, uh, when they are working in uh, an environment where there is union covered work, you can only do that work under a union contract. So, for example, uh, in Los Angeles, the scripted dramatic television industry, I, I, I do a lot of work as a guest star on TV shows, okay? And uh, if somebody were to start a non-union TV show here in Los Angeles, I wouldn't be allowed to do that because I'm a union member and I've said I won't do non-union work. I have to do the covered work under union contracts. Does um, the union treat child actors the same as adult actors? Are there any differences? If so, what are they? <laughs> well, uh, there are a few differences, but mostly, uh, you know, all the members of the union enjoy the full protections of the union. That, that's, that, there is no difference there. Uh, where the, here, you know, you couldn't run to serve on the board of directors uh, yet until you're 18. Once you're 18, you can run for the board. Uh, yay! Uh, and like I said, there are certain protections that the union offers that apply uh, only to children. For example, uh, tutoring. Uh, the kind of things that uh, you need for the sets to make sure that you're getting your education properly and the work timing requirements for example the number of hours that you can work during the day that would be different than an adult but basically uh, other than those things which are specific to children in terms of the protections uh, you, you, ha you get access to the pension plan you get access to the health insurance plan so on and so forth how many people were in SAG after and before and after? Well, uh, there were about 125,000 members of the Screen Actors Guild and uh, a little over 70,000 members of AFTRA. That's a very uh, rough approximation. But a lot of those members were already members of both unions. So in the combined union, SAG AFTRA, there's about 160,000 people. That's a lot of people. Whoa. That is a lot of people. Oh my goodness. Yeah, well, you know, we're, the, we're now the biggest uh, entertainment and media union in this country. And uh, it's, it's a great thing. It's one of the real uh, strengths of merging the unions because not only are we a larger union, uh, but we cover the entire entertainment and media industry. And that's good because, you know, the reason the union exists is for people who do one, uh, you know, who are employed by the same employers. There, there are these seven big companies that uh, pretty much control the entertainment and media industry. These would be people like uh, Viacom, uh, Disney, um, yeah, Disney. you know, Disney, uh, Disney. NBC Universal, and, and, and uh, Fox, the others. Uh, so you have these seven conglomerates that control the entertainment and media industries. And people who work in movies, who work in television shows, who work uh, for news outlets, who do reality programming, who uh, host uh, talk shows, all sorts, all of, that, all of that entertainment and media is run and controlled by those conglomerates. So well, if you have all of those people together in one union, they can be more effective in protecting one another. Because the whole point of a union is for those people to come together when it comes time to bargain a contract. That's the, that's the piece of paper that has all the terms and conditions that say that you have to have breaks on set, 
uh, that you have to have uh, proper time to get your teaching, that you have to have a guardian with you, mm -hmm. uh, all that sort of stuff. That's all laid out in a contract. And the way you negotiate the contract is that the employers sit on one side of the table, the bargaining table. That's, that's where it all happens. Mm -hmm. And then the union members sit on the other side of the table. And they, they talk to one another and they finally agree on terms so that we can work appropriately. Well, the more people you have on your side of the table covering all of the work that the employers do, the more leverage you have, the more power you have to get better terms and get better pay, better residuals, better uh, pension benefits, better health insurance. So that's one of the reasons it was so good that we merged. I hear that's happening for Catching Fire, news mo new movie for The Hunger Games, the second movie. Okay. I hear that's happening too, huh? Uh, well, I'm not sure. How, I'm, not, I'm not quite clear on the question. I mean, I know I know The Hunger Games is yeah. super popular. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and I I take it there's going to be a sequel, uh, but I'm not sure uh, what you're asking about in terms of negotiation. Like on the first movie, it was they weren't getting paid enough. So is the union going to like make sure it's uh. yeah? Okay, well, that's, I'm glad you asked that question because this is a, a, a good chance to talk about something that not a lot of people necessarily understand. The union sets minimums. In other words, we, our contracts are all about saying that if you work on a certain type of project, you must be paid at least this much and you can only work so many hours and you have to get a pension contribution and a health insurance contribution of a certain amount. For an individual movie like The Hunger Games and, and the sequel that they're going to do, obviously uh, you're right in that uh, because The Hunger Games is so successful, the cast and the director and the people who are on the creative side of that, they want to improve uh, their terms and conditions if they can for any sequels that they do. So they're going to try to negotiate with the producers of that movie and say, look, you know, we made a ton of money here and we want and you're going to make a ton of money out of the next thing and we want to get paid more but all of those people uh, or most of those people are going to be working way above the union minimums you see what the union really exists for is to make sure that our members who work in these professional circumstances get paid enough so the union makes sure that if you work in a certain uh, circumstance, you're going to at least get paid a certain amount. You're going to at least get a certain type of residual. You're going to get uh, a, a certain minimum contribution to your pension and your health uh, plan. Uh, when you become a big celebrity or you're involved in a really super successful movie, you're way above those numbers. You could be making $100,000 for a movie or a million dollars for a movie or even more. And that's where your personal agent is going to the producers and they're saying that they have a bargaining table too, but well, it's a telephone usually. But uh, they, they call up and they say, hey, listen, we need more money to get uh, my client in this project. Uh, so it's the same principle, but the union doesn't uh, do that part of it. The union sets the minimums for all our members. Give me all your money and nobody gets hurt. <laughs> you want to be a negotiator for sag after? Sure. Right, yeah. You're my kind of negotiator. Yeah. <laughs> Could you give us an example in kids' terms where a union like sag after would help? Sure. I mean, well, the, the, the example is that when we go and negotiate our contracts, whether it's uh, shows, look, I'll bet you guys watch a lot of shows on uh, the Disney Channel, on oh, cable, yeah. like iCarly. Well, that's a Nickelodeon that's show, Nickelodeon. I think. But, but, you know, there's, there's shows like uh, uh, iCarly Ant and. Farm. Tell me a few of them. Tell okay, me there's a few like Ant Farm, Wizards, Lab Rats, Rats, Which is a Waverly Place. Place. It's going bye bye, though. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, what else? That's like Shake It Up. Oh, Shake It Up. Phoenix and Fur. Uh, victorious. Yeah, victorious. So SpongeBob. Yeah, okay. So my, my kids watch all those shows too, and uh, so when we go and negotiate the contract that those uh, that those shows are done under, we really want to be smart about trying to improve the terms of those contracts. Those are shows that employ a lot of kids, obviously, and a lot of kids watch them. And so when we go and negotiate with the producers of those shows and say, look, when we have our our members many of whom are kids who perform in your shows, 
we want to raise their pay. We want to we want to increase their pay. We want to increase their residuals. We want to increase their pension and health benefits. And that's the time when the union steps in and it either increases the pay or increases your working protection. Sometimes it's about making sure that the brakes are a little bit longer or that you don't have to drive quite as far without getting gas money back. Or you know, there's there's all sorts of uh, uh, terms and conditions that apply to the contracts, but whatever they are, negotiation is your chance to improve them. Is it like kids in a schoolyard uniting against a bully instead of just like ignoring the kid <laughs> getting beat up? <laughs> it's a lot like that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know that uh, all the employers aren't bullies, but uh, you do want to, uh, you're stronger when you're band together, right? Exactly. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons the merger was so important. You, you know, previously we had SAG over here and AFTRA over here, and then you had the big guy, the AMPTP or the JPC, <laughs> our employers. These are the groups that our employers come in. They're big, powerful guys. Well, you know, it's better if you're a big, powerful guy, too, and by coming together, that's what, you, that's what happens. Like a big wa like a s bunch of popsicle sticks forever tied together instead of just one on its own. That's you can right. break that you one. Can, you can break one popsicle <laughs> stick. Real yeah. easy, right? But yeah. you, you get can't. a bunch of them together, no way. You need like a muscle make unless builder you're, guy. Unless you're Superman. Things. You could if you're Superman you could do it. Well, I guess you could. <laughs> I hope we never have to negotiate against an angry Superman. <laughs> yeah, I'll be on our side. Yeah. <laughs> When to become a member of SAG-AFTRA, are you a member for life? Well, you're a member as long as you stay in good standing. I mean, you have to keep paying your dues. Uh, there's dues every year. Uh, right now, the base dues, for, remember I told you, it costs $3,000 to join the union. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not cheap, but you get a lot of protection for that money. So it's, and, it's in, and if you're going to have a professional career as a performer, Boy, you're going to get those protections paid back many times over uh, over the course of your lifetime, right? So it's important to join. And then after you pay the initiation fee, uh, it's the base dues right now are $198 per year. So as long as you keep your, your uh, dues current, and, and, and there's another part of your dues as well. So it's $198 per year. That's whether you work or not. But then if you work, your earnings are used to calculate uh, uh, an additional part of your dues. So if you work a whole lot, you'd pay more dues, and if you don't work at all, you'd just pay the 198. That is a lot of money. <laughs> it is a lot of money, but thankfully, uh, you know, when you're working uh, regularly as an actor, uh, you, you hopefully you're working in ways that make you enough money to pay your dues and uh, and make plenty of money beyond that, so you can support yourself and maybe. Uh, get married and buy a house and have five kids. Yeah. All. It's all good stuff, but the way you do that is you, you get in a union and you get out and you make sure you're well protected so that all the members have a good chance at a, at a good middle class living. SAG-AFTRA in the U.S. only or are other countries involved? Well, SAG-AFTRA is in the United States, but we uh, do our best in various ways to make sure that our members are protected wherever they work in the world. Can us kids vote on movies for the Oscars? Ah, well, uh, you know, the Oscars are handled by the uh, Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, not SAG-AFTRA. But SAG-AFTRA does have award shows. Uh, we've got the, the SAG Awards from uh, the previous Screen Actors Guild. We've got the Amys from AFTRA. And uh, so, for example, with the SAG Awards, that's uh, those are awards that are given to performers in movies and television shows, and uh, all the members get to vote on those awards when it comes time to to award them. Um, there's a nominating committee uh, which determines which films and television shows will be uh, eligible to potentially receive the award at the show. But to be on the nominating committee, uh, you have to be 17 or older. Mm. For new actors in the industry, are there more opportunities outside, or can you, or is there more opportunities inside SAG after a union, and why? Okay, good. That's a really, really good question because that gets to the heart of something that's a real challenge for unions 
in all areas of work throughout the country, and that's non-union work. There is non-union entertainment and media work done in the United States and all over the world. Uh, generally, the the highest profile work, the movies that everybody talks about, like The Hunger Games and, uh, and, and the TV shows that we were just talking about, that's all done under union contracts. But there are, there are certain pretty famous shows that, uh, not, not scripted shows so much, but uh, some reality shows and some new shows that are not done under union contracts. And so there are opportunities for our members to work, but we talked earlier about Global Rule 1 and no contract, no work. And we say to our members, if you're a union member, you need to work under union contracts. And it's one of the things that you give up when you join and you become a member of the union. You're saying, I'm not going to go do the non-union work. And what the union seeks to do is to cover as much of the work as we possibly can. And there's an important reason for that. When members work under union contracts, and the thing that you get, even though when you become a member of the union, you're saying, I'm not going to do this non-union work, when you do work, you get paid better, you get all those working protections, we'll make sure that you get enough rest, that you get those teaching breaks, uh, that uh, you're in safe working conditions. That's all an important part of working under a union contract, and you don't have those protections under a non-union contract. A non-union set could be a lot more dangerous. You may not get paid very well at all. You won't get any residuals. Uh, you won't get pension and health uh, protection. So, you know, there's, there's chances to work, but you're sure not going to do as well doing that work. It's uh, really a lot, lot better. For, if you're going to have a career, you want to do it as a union member. Okay. Thank you for your time and your interview. We hope you have a good day. Well, I'm sir, I'm already having a good day because I get to talk to you. Oh, oh, let me. I'm knocking the microphones <laughs> out of their hands. It's really been a delight to talk to you. You guys are really professional, and yeah. uh, I'm glad to meet you both. Thank you. We're glad to meet you too. Yeah. yeah. I'm Shayna, and I'm Michaela, and I'm Ned, and you're watching Michaela and Shayna online. Woo!